What's up everybody? It's Tom from the Orange Jungle Tree Sheep here. And today we're continuing a series because these are my reviews for phase two of the MCU, a Jungle Tree production. I am quite excited to get into this because this is the period where honestly the movies started ramping up and things started getting closer to what we know them as today. And, you know, this is Phase 2, so we're covering Iron Man 3 to Ant-Man. And this is going to be pretty exciting, I think. So, yeah, let's get into it. Before I start, I am just going to review my... Or go over my, my review process again. And I did up actually update it slightly. So, two points for production quality. How well is the movie made? Three points for entertainment potential. What kind of entertainment experience is it offering? And, you know, does it live up to that? 2.5 points for source material adaptation. These are based on comics, so that's a big thing. And I'm more focused on how does it, um, what does it adapt and how? Not necessarily, you know, how exactly comic accurate is it? Because there have been some good changes and some bad changes. I'm giving it half a point for objective metrics. And this is sort of a, just a, a general statement on how the, whatever project it is, is viewed. What it's going to be remembered as for whatever kind of entertainment it is. And then two points for general overall quality and, you know, how much I personally enjoy it. Then the last element, I'm ranking essentially the volume of the flaws and you know it's assigned essentially a color blue green yellow orange red and that's pretty much everything that i need to go over before we start i did alter this slightly so objective metrics is worth half a point instead of a full point just a slight change i made because that doesn't quite matter as much all right i that's there's nothing else I need to really talk about before we get into it, so let's go. First up, talking about Iron Man 3. This movie is, I think, the middle between Iron Man 1 and Iron Man 2, or maybe this one is the bottom and Iron Man 2 is in the middle. I really don't know what the, the main opinion on this movie is, but I'm going to talk about it regardless. Production quality, I'm giving it 1.5 points because it's got some impressive shots, got some cool, interesting ideas, but some of the, the things with the plot are kind of clunky. You know, the, the final battle and the villain are a little underwhelming at times. It This is a, a, a good movie in terms of those things, but it just could have done more to be better than just good and entertainment potential i'm giving it two points it is a solid conclusion to the trilogy and i think it this movie does get some a little bit of criticism that is not necessary it might be a little bit better than a lot of people talk about but for being at a time where things were uncertain and it was kind of just going along it you know it's it did some stuff well for being in a time like that source material adaptation two points there is a big thing in marvel comics with tony stark that in really in the the 20th century there was a big flaw that he was given which was alcoholism and it was a personal thing that, you know, he had to overcome in his growth to become a more well-rounded person and a better superhero. Stuff like that, you know, is viewed differently today. So his arc of, in his personal development is actually something I really like, centering it on his trauma from the Battle of New York in The Avengers. And I found that just really interesting. The adaptation of the storylines regarding Extremis, that's, if you've seen this movie, basically they're creating super soldiers with basically fire powers and some related things. That is a 
the semi lesser well-known Iron Man story. And I think they did it pretty well in adapting something like that. That's kind of obscure to the big screen. Objective metrics and giving it half a point. This movie is a little divisive sometimes in terms of how people think of it, but it was a good conclusion to the trilogy. And I think most people generally have a positive to kind of middling opinion of it. Overall quality, personal enjoyment, giving it 1.5 points because the problems with it are sometimes I think, I think about them when I'm watching this movie, but I like it. You know, it is a good third Iron Man movie. It wasn't the best third Iron Man movie, but it was good. And I'm giving it green flaws for the flaw volume because they're there, but they're not too big. Yeah, it's got some issues and it just needed to be, I think, refined a little bit more, but it's kind of just how it went, honestly. And for the overall score, that means that this movie got 7.5 out of 10, green. All right, next. Talking about Thor The Dark World. Probably the worst considered MCU movie until Phase 4. This was not a not considered to be a very good movie and i can see why honestly production quality gets one point from me because this movie is just bland and it's bland that that is just the best description of this movie it there's a lot of stuff in it but it's it's like okay this is what we've got. The, the plot is just kind of uninteresting in places. The performances are fine, but it, it's, it's the middle film of a trilogy. It's often that, you know, middle installments of a trilogy of things tend to be the worst because, you know, the first one is the first, the last one is the big conclusion. And then the one in the middle has to carry things over and, this movie kind of suffered because of it, giving giving it 1.5 points for entertainment potential because it's an all right Thor sequel movie, but it, it it struggles to keep me actually engaged. Honestly, this is the first movie that feels a tad bit like it's a Marvel Studios movie, Marvel Studios in quotes that it's a big budget movie being made by a big budget studio that because because it is being made by a big studio might not have the the care for the story being told and the product being made that a smaller not super massive entertainment company might have giving it 1.5 points for source material adaptation because thor is all right in this thor's all right in this movie but the big thing that a lot of people tend to talk about is the villain and he's just kind of uninteresting. Malekith and the Dark Elves have some basis in um, Norse mythology, if I remember correctly. But, you know, the comics version pulled some stuff from that. And then this is pulling from the comics. In this movie, they're more aliens than they are mystical. And in the comics, the Dark Elves are some really interesting mystical enemies of Thor based on Norse mythology. And here they kind of bungled it because they just kind of exist and are, we have this dark aesthetic. And it just kind of really doesn't work. Objective metrics, giving it a quarter point, because I think in retrospect, with some of the discourse on, especially some of the Phase 4 stuff, this movie has been is kind of seen as not quite as bad in comparison. Honestly, you know, it, it, it just sort of turned out that way. Giving it 1.25 points for overall quality and personal enjoyment because I still kind of enjoy this movie. Kind of is the best way to describe it. It, you know, I, I, I'll rewatch it sometimes, like rarely, but... It's just something I struggle to like, and that's why I'm giving it yellow flaws. I kind I struggle to like this movie. It exists. I might see it again. Who knows? And that's why I'm giving it a 5.5 out of 10 yellow. In relative contrast, 
to a movie that I'm middled on. Let's get into a really good one. Captain America the Winter Soldier. This is a very good movie. This is a very entertaining movie. Two points for production quality because it is just a well-made movie. Interesting ideas. Interesting performances. Giving it 2.5 points for entertainment potential because it's... This is awesome. This is an awesome movie about what is the nature of power and the nature of people in power, you know, doing as they please and what is their responsibility. And and it raises some interesting ethical questions. But some of those ideas could have been explored just a little bit better. That's why it's 2.5 points out of three. Source material adaptation, giving it 2.5 points because the Winter Soldier is really interesting in this movie, and they adapted him pretty well, especially considering, you know, the inclusion of Bucky in the first Captain America movie. And the infiltration of S.H.I.E.L.D. by Hydra was also adapted really interestingly from the comics, and they translated it into something that worked in the MCU. You know, it's a little different from how it works in the comics, but... It, it still works. It's still awesome. Giving it half a point for objective metrics because this is remembered really well. And this is one of the best films out of the first three, the first three phases. It, it, it really stands out. And I'm giving it two points for, you know, overall quality and personal enjoyment because I love this movie. This is just an awesome movie. Captain America is interesting in it. All the other characters are interesting in it. It gets me thinking about some interesting things. This is just a really well-made movie. And Blue Flaws, they practically aren't there. <laughs> yes, they're there, and they're very small, <laughs> but they practically aren't there. So this movie overall gets a score of 9.5 out of 10, Blue. Alrighty, we're halfway done. So now we're talking about Guardians of the Galaxy. I do quite like this movie. Not quite as much as some of the other ones, but this is a, like, on the... If there's a scale that goes from good to great to excellent, this movie is great. Not quite excellent for me personally. I understand why a lot of people like it, though. I really do like this movie. But I'm giving it 1.5 points for production quality because... Because honestly... I get that this was a movie that was being a little bit more lighthearted, you know, a found family sort of dynamic. And that's the story they were trying to tell in the movie they were trying to make. And I really like what James Gunn did. But this movie, the action -y, more intense parts, it needed more. It just needed a little bit more of that. Ronan the Accuser in this movie sort of doesn't exist and he's, he doesn't really do very much. I mean, like at the end of the movie, when you're expecting a bigger final thing, a final confrontation, not that the dance off is not iconic and, you know, them all holding onto the power stone is not really cool, but it just needed a little bit more. And that's why I'm giving it 1.5 points. I'm giving it two points for entertainment potential because kind of similar to production quality, that intensity needed to be there a little bit more. And in terms of what I'm looking, f what I was really looking for going into this movie and what I'm seeing now could have happened, and especially what they could have done with this, being that this is a co very cosmic movie, it just could have, it just could have done more. That's not to say I don't like the movie. I really love this movie. It just, that balance just needed to be slightly farther in the direction of the, the intensity and less of the lighthearted stuff. Source material adaptation, I'm giving it 2.5 points because they adapted the Guardians of the Galaxy really well and in a really interesting way. Nailed the found family dynamic, nailed their interactions with each other. There are a bunch of misfits coming together to just go on the spacefaring adventure and do some interesting stuff. This team is actually not the original Guardians of the Galaxy team. 
there was one in the 90s, I think, with some kind of obscure characters, including uh, Yondu, um, you know, the leader of the Ravagers in this movie. But that team was kind of obscure and it kind of might not have worked, honestly. So what they did with the later incarnation, this team, really interesting. I love it. Giving it half a point for objective metrics because it's remembered really well. This is just one of those very good, very entertaining movies. And I'm giving it two points for overall quality and personal enjoyment, as well as green flaws. Because despite the fact that those things, those problems are there, that does not diminish my enjoyment of this movie. I love this movie, especially the soundtrack. The soundtrack is one of the most iconic parts of this movie, and it made it really interesting. Yeah, I get that, you know, it might be a little bit of nostalgia and whatever, but I like it. It's just fun. This is just a fun movie. And, you know, that is honestly sort of what we needed, even if that could have been done slightly differently. But we just, we needed a little bit of fun. So this movie, overall, 8.5 out of 10, green. Alrighty. <laughs> this one. Mm. Avengers Age of Ultron. I'm mixed on this movie. I quite like it. There's some stuff to like about it. But I am realizing now, sitting here recording this, that I am... <laughs> I'm a little bit more upset about this movie than I thought I was because I'm going to deviate away from doing stuff in order and talk about source material adaptation first. Give it 1.5 points. Gosh dang it. I do not like why I do not like James Spadery Ultron. <laughs> Ultron is supposed to be a terrifyingly inhuman robot who makes you scared of how much, how little he cares for humanity. But instead, we got sort of edgy, edgy, moody James Spader Ultron. Not that James Spader isn't great. You know, James Spader's awesome. Watch, <laughs> watch some office clips of James Spader in the office. He's great. But gosh dang it, this is not how you do Ultron. This is like, like, this makes me legitimately mad now that I'm realizing how, how, how they, they kind of bungled Ultron. And I thought I wasn't as mad about it as I am. But now I'm sitting here realizing, wow, Ultron could have been done way better. And this movie could have been remembered <laughs> better. I'm sorry for ranting, but I'm a, I'm a fan of Ultron in the comics. Not that I dislike this version of Ult Ultron outright. But it's just what not what Ultron is. You can make something like this work, but... The dichotomy there is too far to be salvaged. It needed to pick a direction. And, you know, that's why... That's kind of why I feel the way I do about this movie. For production quality and entertainment potential, both 1.5 points. It's a good Avengers movie. It's a good Avengers movie about, you know, Discord and them falling out from each other and you know, really laying the seeds for Captain America Civil War. And it's a good movie, but there's also some other issues that I have with this movie. As I mentioned in my Phase 1 reviews, I don't like some of the stuff that Joss Whedon has done. I, I, this is a, I, I, re, I like this movie. I do. That's why I gave it 1.75 points for personal enjoyment. But there are issues with this movie. The Hulk's, Hulk's characterization is, this was the no going back point for Hulk's weird characterization in the MCU and not being comic accurate. And it kind of pisses me off. There's a lot of things about this movie that piss me off, but there's also a lot of things I like. The stuff at the farmhouse, especially with Iron Man and Captain America's conversation there and all the stuff happening with, you know, the Hydra stuff, you know, the Maximoff twins being the Hydra experiments in this movie is actually really interesting. And them being part of the Avengers is interesting. But this this yellow flaws for this movie. I'm trying not to be so angry. But this movie just has some issues. And it could have been an awesome second Avengers movie. But instead it's kind of a sort of meh kind of good second Avengers movie. So that's why I'm giving it 6.5 out of 10 and yellow.
And I just want to make it clear before I move on. I do like this. I will rewatch this movie because I do find it entertaining. But it just has, it has issues. I like this, this in spite of its flaws. And I think there's something valuable to be gained by trying to enjoy something in spite of its flaws, at least for me. So I guess that's a little bit, a little bit about me, I guess. All right. So we're getting into the last one. This is going to be a bit more positive. I'm going to be calmer here. We're talking about Ant-Man. I quite like uh, this movie. It is a smaller, sort a little bit more lighthearted, out of the way movie. And it works. Honestly, this movie works for me. It's like I said about Guardians of the Galaxy. It's just fun. This is just a fun movie. And when I think about it in the scope of the greater overall MCU, this was also something that we needed. In contrast to Guardians, you know, expanding the cosmic side of the MCU, this was kind of sort of the more grounded thing that we we needed. And I like it for that. Production quality, giving it 1.5 points, because it feels a little haphazard at times. You know, it feels a little underwhelming sometimes. But that's not a huge thing. That is not super important. Giving it 2.5 points for entertainment potential. The haphazard nature of it sometimes does carry over in, in, into what kind of movie it feels like it's being. The balance of being a lighthearted kind of heist film versus, you know, interesting tech stuff. And, you know, that balance could have been done slightly better. But it you know, not by much. It's still, still a very good, still a good movie, still a very fun movie, giving it 215 points for source material adaptation. And this is actually quite interesting because uh, for some of you who may not know, Scott Lang, the main MCU Ant-Man, is actually not the original Ant-Man in the comics. Hank Pym, played by Michael Douglas in a very good performance, Hank, he is actually the original Ant-Man. And his wife, Janet Van Dyne, is the original Wasp. Hope Van Dyne, in this movie, is an original character in the MCU. And I actually really like what they did, because they got Scott Lang's story right, and they changed it up so he is now the primary Ant-Man, with, you know, the first generation Hank Pym being in a, a mentor role, and he was a hero in his former days. And I really like it. It's really interesting. I mean, I guess I would have liked to see some some more of Hank Pym. You know, maybe him and Janet Van Dyne being founding members of the Avengers like they are in the comics. And then pulling a little bit more from the main continuity Avengers than they did from some of the alternate continuities. But this is a good movie. This is a good... This is just a, a, a good movie. An interesting concept. So I'm giving it half a point for objective metrics two points for overall quality and personal enjoyment because it is just a fun movie and it has some slight issues, sli very slight issues, which is why I'm giving it green flaws leading to an overall score, nine out of 10 green. I just like this movie. Ant-Man is just a very fun, lighthearted movie and I really like it. And I look back on it very fondly for the, how much I've been entertained by this movie honestly. All right. So that ends the six movies that are a part of phase two. So now we're going to get into my overall thoughts on this phase. So the scores that we have, Iron Man 3, 7.5 out of 10, green. Thor, The Dark World, 5.5 out of 10, yellow. Captain America, The Winter Soldier, 9.5 out of 10, blue. Guardians of the Galaxy, 8.5 out of 10, Green, Avengers, Age of Ultron, 6.5 out of 10, yellow, and Ant-Man, 9 out of 10, green. So that means Phase 2 of the MCU gets an overall score of 7.8 out of 10, and green. The best way that I will sum up my overall thoughts on this phase, good. Not great, but good, and that is this whole phase overall. 
I would say Age of Ultron, Iron Man 3, and Thor The Dark World are the bottom three. And the top three are Winter Soldier, Guardians, and Ant-Man. So considering all six of those together, this is a good phase. It is not great, but it is good. It is solid. It was a good follow-up overall to phase one. And despite its issues, especially with how mad I'm realizing I am about Age of Ultron, <laughs> I still like this phase. I, I still like this. It is still quite interesting. There's one criticism I need to bring in that is very minor. If phase one was assembling the Avengers, phase two, from what they did, was clear that it, this was the Avengers disassembling. Conflict is being sown throughout, and they're gradually, the, the big characters are gradually starting to separate a little bit. And obviously, right into the, the next film, the first film of Phase 3, Captain America Civil War, there's a, a huge split between two sides. This phase could have done a little bit more to make that feel a little bit more organic and not so abrupt at the beginning of Phase 3. And honestly, I think Captain America Civil War should have been in Phase 2 if, in terms of the fairly arbitrary groupings that phases are. But if that's what this phase is about, it feels a little bit underwhelming and a little bit to, oh, let's just fast track it. But, but overall, that doesn't diminish my enjoyment of this phase by, by too much. And honestly, I am still going to look back on this phase fondly as I, I do phases one and three for different reasons and, you know, maybe slightly different in terms of exactly how I enjoy it, but I still do like this phase. It is a good second phase. As I said with Avengers Age of Ultron, the middle of a trilogy has a tendency to not be as good as one and three, and I think that happens here but it is not so bad that it erases my enjoyment 7.8 out of 10 is pretty good for me honestly you know if an 8 out of 10 is great and 9 out of 10 is really great and a 10 out of 10 is absolutely like excellent 7.8 out of 10 good not great but good and that's what phase 2 is that's everything i really wanted to talk about we made it through all of my reviews and you heard my thoughts on the phase overall so i just want to say Thank you for watching. It has been quite fun getting to do this and talk about some really interesting entertainment stuff and let people know what I'm thinking because it's just fun. I enjoy talking about these things. I'm a fan of comics. I'm a fan of superheroes. This stuff is kind of the bread and butter in ways of my entertainment and what kind of entertainment I enjoy. So I just want to say thank you for watching. Thanks for put it, I guess, giving your time to listen to what I had to say, because it means a lot. I care a lot about an interesting discussion. And once again, you can see the sheep. He says, thank you for watching as well. <laughs> you know, I am the orange single tree sheep after all. So I suppose there has to be an orange sheep in here somewhere. <laughs> all right. Well, that's everything. Thank you for watching again. This has been Tom from The Orange Jungle Tree Sheep. Expect Phase 3 coming at some point in the future. And, yeah, look forward to lots of very interesting things. I hope you have a good day. Goodbye.